Hello and welcome to this short video on how to um, expose variables from a material and alter them in a sequence. Okay, so in this example, as you can see here, if I just simulate this, I, I have a sequence, if I simulate it, it very quick, but what it does is, I'll slow this down a little bit. What this does is it will alter, it will change the color of the, of this sphere based on um, whatever the, I'm just going to add another one in here, which is just purely red. Uh, based on the color I have denoted in the bottom here. So if you, I'll just demonstrate this. So it starts as red, goes to yellow and then goes to green. So it slowly changes the color. Um, now this is will only function when it is simulating because the it requires tick to be running so this wouldn't work in a standard this wouldn't work when you just play a film back for for a sequencer but this is how i have done it um, the first thing that i have gone and done is i have created a simple parent material which looks like this it has only one parameter placed into it, and that is base color. Now, this is a, uh, a vector. Uh, this is a uh, vector three. I'll show you how to get this. If you hold down three, right-hand click and go convert to parameter, that will bring you up a, um, that will convert this to a parameter like that. I've named this base color because we're going to create a instance of this and make it dynamic. So that is the parent material. And then, uh, then what I want to do, I should just, then I have created a material instance. So I've right hand clicked on it and I've created a material instance and that gives me this M M I uh, simple animated. So this is my simple material. If you open that up, it's just going to look like that. And that's all we need because we've only got one parameter and we're going to be setting that parameter when you, through a actor script. Now, I have created a new actor for this and I've called it the color changed sphere. So in order to do this, what I have done is I've right hand clicked, I've gone to blueprint class, I've created a new actor here and um, I will open up this, so to edit it. And I've then gone in and I've added a component to be just a sphere, because that, that's all I need. I want to change the color of that. Now on begin play, I have started off by creating a dynamic material instance. And that would consist of, and that's going to be placed on the sphere. So the target is the sphere and uh, the source material is the material instance we've created a couple of seconds ago. I have then saved this material as a, a variable so that I could easily reference it in future. You can do that by right hand clicking on here and go promote to variable and that will create a material or a variable. Then I've just I've just gone and renamed it I think to make it material. Now, this is where we do the changing. What I'm doing is I'm running this script on tick. So I've got a reference to the material and I am updating this variable. Um, so I, I've got the material, I've dragged off it and I've gone set vector parameter value. The parameter name has to be the same as in the parent material. So that's base color. And then I have right hand clicked on here create promoted to a variable and created a base color variable. Once you compile, I've set the default to red, but that's not terribly important. So what this is going to do is this is going to check this variable 
on tick, every single tick, so it's every frame of the game, and it is going to go away and update the dynamic material which we created here. Okay, so that is all I needed from that script. What we need to do now is go to, I need a level sequence. To get a level sequence, I've clicked down on the cinematics and I've gone add level sequence. If I create a new one of these, for example, I'm going to call this example and this will create a box down here in the bottom left hand corner. Um, now, in order to update this level C, in order to update this, I need to add it to the, I need to add it to the, um, to the sequence. So I go plus track, act to sequence, add color change. Now, one thing I forgot to mention here is this variable, base color, we are going to want to alter and update in the sequence. So in order to do that, we need to tick a couple of boxes. So if you select base color, you can see in the top right hand corner, you've got the details panel. Now, we really want this to be instance editable and exposed to cinematics. So that will mean we'll be capable of grabbing it within the level sequence. Okay, now, if you look here on this color changing track and I go plus track, right at the bottom, you can see we've got base color. And that's a linear color. So if I select that, uh, it will add in the base color here. And you can play around with these numbers to create different, different colors. And you can uh, press this button in order to, to save your settings. So I could uh, make it blue there, for example. It should automatically save the ones that are going to white. There you go, so on. And that works like that. Okay, so that is a new level sequence. I'm going to delete the previous one so that it doesn't override it. And the other thing that you need to have is autoplay. And you can you could probably loop it indefinitely if you wanted to see that, that continuing to go. So um, let's just simulate. And you can see that this is now flirting between those two two colors. Okay, and so the reason I'm demonstrating this is because this would show you how to get any variable from a material instance, and you could plug it into here. So, for example, I could I could do exactly the same thing with the the transparency or the um, the roughness, and so you can have this update. Um, as a game is running, uh, or um, if you're doing a virtual production, it would it would be functioning in the background. Okay, hope that helps. Cheers, Mike.